Uh, yes, my name is Russell King. Uh, one of the pretexts for, for, for much of our fighting today is Islamic extremism. And um, uh, both Iran and, and Sudan have Islamist states. And uh, we hear sometimes that uh, Sudan su supplies arms to Iran. But uh, the People's Republic of China uh, actually uh, transships those weapons, I believe, uh, most likely uh, through, through Costco ships to Sudan. So, uh, you know, Allah doesn't spontaneously create arms out of the desert. So we do have problems with China, and, and, I, and I don't like the idea that we're in RIMPAC relationships with China. And um, I, I think as far as land power is concerned, we have uh, dormant threats in Europe, and Russia will, con will increase its power, uh, land power, and may not use it, may just threaten to use it, and also use... Uh, natural gas and, and resource leverage over Western Europe, so there's a problem there. And, uh, I, and, and I think as far as counterinsurgency, any strategically important place, we're, uh, important country, we're going to need counterinsurgency capabilities. And I would respectfully disagree with your uh, term uh, wars of conquest in Iraq and Afghanistan, because uh, in, in, in every case where there's a hostile country, including Germany and Japan, you could say war of conquest. But that's, that's a derogatory term used against the United States by uh, countries that are not friendly to us. Yeah, let me just say, I'm a realist, and I believe that war is a legitimate instrument of, uh, of diplomacy. And uh, I didn't mean wars of conquest is a bad thing. Uh, wars of conquest are sometimes a good thing. I believe that we did conquer Germany and we did conquer Japan in World War II. I didn't mean that in a pejorative way. Uh, my point is that when you conquer countries, you, you invade them and you topple the regime and you take those countries over, which is what I meant by conquest. Uh, the big problem you face is that you invariably end up in an occupation. And occupations in the modern world are remarkably difficult because of nationalism. Uh, countries like Vietnam, countries like the Philippines, two places where we had a lot of trouble in the 20th century, countries like Afghanistan, countries like Iraq, don't like the idea of a bunch of Americans invading their country and telling them how to do their business. And of course, that's what we end up doing with nation building. And my argument is you should avoid those sorts of conflicts uh, as much as possible. And given the recent experiences in Afghanistan and Iraq, I do not believe we're going to do that again. Uh, and I think that counterinsurgency uh, is and will remain a dirty word for most people. Uh, they might not say that publicly, but in their minds, I think that they believe it. I think some of the other threats that you describe are there, but they don't require the United States to build a large army to deal with. With regard to Russia, uh, Russia is a country that has very little military capability. There's no threat that it's going to dominate Europe. This is not the former Soviet Union in any way, shape, or form. And we do not need to build military forces to contain Russia. And in fact, I believe that if China continues to, ru to, to rise, Russia will be part of the balancing coalition against China. I think that balancing coalition will include South Korea, Japan, the United States, Singapore, Vietnam, Taiwan, India, and Russia, right? So the Russians will be with us if China continues to rise. The Europeans will not be, but the Russians will. And with regard to Islamist states, in some cases they are threats to us and we have to deal with them, but we do not need a large land army uh, to deal with those states, and we certainly don't want to invade them uh, and try to do social engineering in them as we did in Afghanistan and Iraq, because I think it'll just end up in disaster.